Hello everyone, welcome to another review. We're going to be doing a couple of them because we saw a couple of movies this weekend. Um, we're going to go with the last theatrical music movie we saw by director Lynn Ramsey. This is a movie called You Were Never Really Here. You Were Never Really Here is starring Joaquin Phoenix playing the character of Joe. And he appears to be not a hitman, but he is a protector, a guardian. He's someone who he's a he's a hired gun basically. <clears throat> and he gets on one particular mission, he gets sent by a senator to get his daughter who was kidnapped. While in the midst of, of saving her, things go sideways, there's a conspiracy against the senator. And we have a movie here. This is a movie that's not interested in giving you information at all. And I don't think there's a lot of information to be given to the... We don't... We know Joe has a mom that he's taking care of. We know through, or we can deduce through fla uh, flashbacks, that he used to be in the war. He was kind of abused when he was younger as to how it's never told because once again this is not information that's told or given to us. This is all stuff we see. Joe, ba this is basically a couple of days in the life of this character named Joe. Once again we do not know if that's his real name. That's what he just happens to call himself and no one really calls him by a name. And throughout the movie he has these moments of flashbacks of he gets brief moments of flashbacks while things happening. We know he's had things happen to him. And this is a man obviously suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder because he's getting these flashbacks. And Joaquin Phoenix more or less is very silent role in this movie. We also know he has he either wants to he wants to suffocate or he wants to stop breathing. There are moments where you will see him uh, put plastic bags over his face and seeing how long he can hold his breath. Um, there are scenes, various scenes where you can see this is not a man who wants to live anymore. At the same time, I don't, it sounds like when I saw, when I see the trailers, I, I thought this was going to be some type of death wish instead of Charles Bronson or um, oh, I can't believe I can't remember his name now. The guy from Die Hard, anyway. Bruce Willis shooting people from the trailers. You can see this is a man who likes using hammers. And you think you're going to get that type of movie. But no, this movie's really a slow burn. It's challenging because there's very little dialogue. It's kind of just following this guy around. And even when we get to the violent part, a lot of it is implied and not shown. Either through whenever he, there's a couple of times he's in buildings trying uh, exacting justice. Uh, we'll go through the view of the security cameras so you'll see room, another room, another room. We'll come back to a, the, a different room we already saw and the person will already be, already be dead. Or you'll see him swing a hammer and the person he's hitting is either on the outside of that screen so you don't see the violence. And, and that happens a couple of times in this movie. But trust me, it does earn its R ratings for in a couple of different places. Joe is obviously not only seeing conflicted, but you can also tell at times he is a caring person. He has his mother who he takes care of who seems to be the only person he has any type of connection with and we see when he when he's with the little girl Nina that he does care for her even though it's not his you know he has some type of compassion in him but he has issues he has huge emotional issues whenever he's alone he there's there's a scene in a, a bathhouse where he has a towel on his face and he's doing some type of ritual and just in that one scene, there's a lot of different things you can get out of it. Um, but once again, this movie's really challenging because there's not a lot there. You have to real. This movie only has an, an hour and thirty minute runtime. 
but you can it feels it because of just all the traveling all you know things are happening and no there's no explanation to the audience you kind of have to piece things together this might be a movie you have to watch more than once but would you want to watch it more than once is my issue and no I don't the sound design is interesting in this movie if it wasn't for the sound design I probably would have fell asleep because there are there's only so much you can take of just scenes of like everyday life or but everyday life being told in silence this movie's getting a lot of love and I heard one person say oh do you think this is something that only critics are like, gonna like and not audiences I don't think audiences are gonna like this a wide audience will not dig this movie in the least I was in a theater it wasn't that many people but even when it was over uh, this one person next to me and Jeff looked at us and was like, what the heck? And I was like, I, don't, I couldn't tell you. It's supposed to be a case study and I get it, but I kind of find it, found it more interesting to talk about it with Jeff when we were leaving and just saying, I don't, even Jeff was like, I don't know what I just saw. And that's what you kind of get with this movie. Um, yeah, that's what, you, uh, I was so confused and I was I was semi bored but I couldn't go to sleep because of the sound design which I guess is a good thing. It's not I, I do have to give a lot of credit for Joaquin Phoenix for this role. You really do feel the anguish. Um he even took a body transformation growing out his beard, gaining weight. Um and you do feel his sadness and in moments especially when stuff starts going wrong in the third act but to get there is just such a chore and it didn't feel like it was worth it or at least to me this, like I said this is only an hour and 30 minutes long and it felt so you feel every second of it and you can take that for better or for worse um, if I had to uh, I give a uh, I give it a 3.5. I know this is like high, this is like 87% when I was looking at it a little while ago on Rotten Tomatoes. And I can see critics liking this. Because this is kind of an artsy movie. Like I said, wide audience, no. You'll either be bored by the lack of information, um, and or kind of disappointed that the violence that you think you're going to get isn't really in it. There are moments of shocking violence. And I will say there was this one part at the end that was kind of played for a laugh. But at the same time, it was shocking at the very end. I'm not going to say what it was again, but I was like, we were like up in arms when it happened. Like I said, I, I wouldn't recommend this. If you're an average moviegoer, nope. If you like being challenged, like being thought provoked and like putting puzzles together, this might be a movie you would enjoy. But remember, this is an R-rated movie and there are acts of shocking violence. But most of the time it was just, I was confused in what I was supposed to be paying attention to, what I shouldn't have, what message I was supposed to be getting out of it. And it, it just didn't captivate me in the least. So yeah, I wasn't a big fan of You Were, ne you were Never Really Here. Um, if you happen to see it, you might disagree with me. Rotten Tomatoes does, so if you do, and you saw this movie, uh, it was only running in limited release last week, only in New York and LA. This week is rolled out a little bit wider. If you have seen this movie, please comment below, let me know what you thought of the movie. Um, like, subscribe, and be back again later on with another movie review. Bye and enjoy.